All right, welcome everyone to our live stream Zoom end of year convocation. So glad to have you all with us. Uh, I think most of you are muted, but just in case, double check uh, to see that your particular microphone is muted, uh, just so there's no interfering sounds or anything like that. But it's nice to see some of you there on the, on the Zoom screen. Uh, but I want to welcome you all here. We're going to give a couple of reminders. We're going to give some encouragements today, and we will give a nice official ending to the school year. So thank you again for joining us. And those of you who will be watching the recording later, we're glad you'll be able to view it at another time. So just by way of reminder, I wanted to mention again that next Thursday is a big supply pickup and drop off day. So make sure that you take the time to come out and grab your personal belongings that are still here at the school and drop off any items that need to be brought back. There will actually be a packet in the EPAC today where it will outline a checklist of items that you should be prepared to bring back. And it'll also talk a little bit more about some of the safety precautions that we'll be taking that day as well. And then if questions emerge after that packet is released, you can let us know. Also, uh, just to keep up to date, uh, in terms of graduations, sixth grade and 12th grade graduations, no decisions have been made yet about when those will be or how those will take shape, but we'll continue to give announcements as those come along. Before we really get started, I wanted to mention that we do have a few faculty members joining us in person today. We'll give you a view of them, you can say hello. <laughs> so we're very thankful to have some faculty members here in person, social distancing. We've got a nice open sanctuary for all of us here to gather in. But as we're recognizing the faculty, I wanted to begin by just saying some thank yous. Uh, first, I wanted to thank our faculty those of you also who are on Zoom, for all of the work that you have done this past quarter. It has been a very unique school year. We're very thankful for the flexibility, all of the hours that have gone into transferring learning online, maintaining learning online, meeting with students, and doing all that is necessary to keep making progress in our education and to continue serving all of our families at home. So thank you all again. Uh, we could give a little round of applause for our faculty, though we won't be able to hear it, but uh, we're very thankful and want to make sure that we give our appreciation. Uh, likewise, I wanted to recognize some faculty in particular. Uh, so actually, if Mrs. Kuntz and Miss Deal would actually be willing to come up, you can each take a, a side of the stage, something like that. Uh, and also Mr. Schlepphorst, who is not here in person with us, but I believe is joining us on Zoom. So yeah, if you want to come up here, Liz, and then Kylie over there. So of course, we all know Mrs. Kuntz. We know that this is her last year. That's been the plan coming into this year, that uh, she would be retiring at the end of this year. We're thankful to be welcoming Heather Dernland to take over kindergarten. But uh, we definitely wanted to take a moment to say thank you again, Mrs. Kuntz, for doing all that you've done for the school retiring and then coming back and doing more for the school, <laughs> but uh, she will continue to be very much involved in the work and life of the school in various ways. She already has mentioned she wants to come back and sub if there's ever a sub need in kindergarten or maybe even in some other grades, and I'm sure she'll continue to be a supporter of the school. So let's give a round of applause for Mrs. Coons. And we'll also be mentioning a farewell to her in the EPAC this afternoon. You will have seen that we already have given a farewell to Miss Deal, who has been here with us for the past two years teaching second grade. And so we'll miss her dearly as well. This summer, she's going to be getting married and then she will be moving up to Indiana, which is all very exciting. And so our prayers definitely go with her as she goes into this next season. But we're so thankful to have had you with us these past two years. So let's give a round of applause for Miss Deal as well. Good. All right. Thank you both. You guys can go have a seat. Uh, and then, of course, Mr. Schlepphorst, who uh, I think is joining us on Zoom. I know he at least intended to. You will have seen in the EPAC that he recently had a new addition to his family. And so he's home with them right now. But we're thankful for his service this past year, teaching pre-calculus and calculus and sharing his gifts with the 11th and 12th graders this year. So also a round of applause for Mr. Schlepphorst. And I still wanted to say also another thank you to Mr. Matul. Uh, as all of us know, there's been a transition this year. Mr. Matul serving as our headmaster this first semester, and then me this second semester. But of course, Mr. Matul served for many years before that semester 
And so we just wanted to say thank you again to Mr. Matul. He will, of course, still be with us next year teaching a couple of upper school classes. So he's not leaving, he's not going anywhere. But uh, one more time, we want to recognize his service to the school as headmaster. So a round of applause for Mr. Matul. Very good. And then uh, I wanna conclude my thank yous by thanking the families. Thank you all uh, for your grace with us, for your flexibility, for your constant devotion to the mission of this school and to the education of your children. Uh, honestly, one of the greatest strengths of this school are the families that we have that are part of the community. And so we're very thankful for you. We're very thankful for all that you have done to partner with us through this last quarter of the school year. We're very hopeful that our service to you at the end of this school year has been a very worthwhile and valuable service. And we very much look forward to when we can see each other all again in person uh, in the coming year. So thank you all. Let's give a round of applause for our families. All right. So the next thing that we'll do is we're actually gonna read through Psalm 100 together. That's the Psalm that the uh, grammar school would have been reading through as part of our typical morning routine. And so if you have a Bible with you, that's great. If not, you can just follow along and listen as I read through Psalm 100. And then after I read through Psalm 100, I'm gonna pass things over to Mr. Keating and he is going to share some encouragements with us before we would then close in song and in the ringing of the bell. So Psalm 100, it's a short Psalm. And so if you have your Bible with you, you can turn to it. It's just five verses and read along with me from home if you've got it. Psalm 100 verses one through five. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. All right, I'll welcome Mr. Keating up. All right, well, it is uh, good to see some of your faces um, and uh, to uh, be with you. In a sense, uh, I have to say I had this moment of anxiety uh, late this morning uh, when I was getting ready to come to school and I had to put on a tie and I was like, do I remember how to do this? I've gone uh, a couple weeks without having to tie a tie. Um, and so uh, some of you upper schoolers are like, yeah, well, that's how I feel every, every August when I come back. Um, but, uh, and then I was also thinking as, uh, as we were honoring um, our departing faculty, uh, the Keating household has been watching a, a documentary on ESPN about uh, the 1990s Bulls, Chicago Bulls at NBA basketball team. And I grew up in Chicago, so I grew up as a fan of Michael Jordan and the Bulls. And, and obviously the, the story is uh, that, that MJ, Michael, retires, and then he comes back out of retirement and uh, for, for one more title, and it's a, a drama-filled year. And I feel like in some ways maybe the last dance could have actually just been about Mrs. Koontz's last year at Providence. Uh, but uh, um, anyway, we're uh, grateful to um, have spent this year with you all, even though uh, the final... Um, few months here have been um, with circumstances that none of us would have expected. I want to use the, the brief time that we have this morning to actually look back at um, the comments that Dr. Vaden shared with us at our opening uh, ceremonies back in August, because even though those remarks were made without any sense or understanding of what was going to come before us this year, they were um, very prescient. They, 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 um, spoke to uh, the realities that we've faced over the course of this year, realities that we've faced in the normal day-to-day -day, uh, operations of school, but also especially in the past couple months of uh, distance learning. And so Dr. Vaden shared with all of us seven charges. I'm not going to uh, repeat Dr. Vaden's address. It was better than uh, what I would come up with, but I did want to highlight a couple of the virtues that he mentioned because I think they've been um, especially helpful um, in, the, in the past couple months. Uh, Dr. Vaden charged our students to seek wisdom, which he defined as making the right decision. Uh, seeking wisdom and making the right decision is hard, 
in normal everyday life. Uh, it's even harder when you've been cooped up at home and uh, so many of your decisions that you have to make uh, come without necessarily people around you to uh, always encourage you or to um, you know, be with you, especially as, as many of you have been doing your schooling at home and you have perhaps had mom or dad to help you, but in some of your households, mom and dad have been working too. And, um, and, and even in, in cases where that's not necessarily the, the situation, uh, there are multiple kids at home. And so, uh, you know, it, it isn't easy to seek wisdom in uh, the best of circumstances, but it's been especially challenging uh, in this season. And, uh, and it's been encouraging to, to see the ways that each of our families and our students have risen to that challenge. Dr. Vaden encouraged the grammar school students to seek temperance and the upper school students uh, to seek courage. And I wanna highlight that point of courage because again, courage is one of those words that when we hear it, hear it we think about um, you know, storming the beaches of Normandy or uh, sacrificing your life for your friends. Uh, we think of these uh, momentous, high emotion, high stakes decisions. And uh, for most of us, it probably doesn't feel very courageous uh, to open up our computers and log on to a Google meeting um, day in and day out. It probably feels uh, like the opposite of courage. Um, and yet courage in a lot of ways is really just the, the small acts of uh, faithfulness and discipline and obedience uh, that we choose um, even when we don't want to, even when it's hard to, even when... Um, all of our uh, desires might pull us away. And so, uh, it, again, it doesn't, it doesn't seem courageous uh, to wake up in the morning and log on to Zoom or Google Meet once again, but it actually is. It actually is uh, a form of courage. And, and again, courage is a thing that often makes us think about, you know, fighting against some dramatic enemy, right? Um, and when Dr. Vaden spoke in the spring, uh, he brought out uh, Sting, who I have here with me. And uh, Sting, of course, is Bilbo's uh, short sword from The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit especially. And, um, and, and we're in this season of, you know, distance learning and quarantine and, and all these things that are so strange and difficult and offer such trials in our lives. And sometimes it feels like it would be a lot easier if our enemy was concrete enough as Smog was for Bilbo, right? Smog was a dragon that he could see, that he could uh, deal with. Um, and, and one of the difficulties uh, with our situation is that our enemies aren't always apparent, that, that we live in a world that's fallen and broken, and sometimes that fallenness and brokenness takes the form of enemies that we can't necessarily see or hear. And yet, nonetheless, when we wake up when we uh, are obedient, when we are faithful, we actually are fighting back against the enemies of sin, Satan, and death. The, the ways in which the fall have affected the world, um, again, it doesn't feel like it, but our little acts of obedience are uh, tearing little corners off of the darkness so that the light can get through uh, into our own lives and into the lives of uh, our family and our friends and our community. And so uh, Dr. Vaden encouraged us uh, to, to seek courage, and I've been uh, encouraged. That's a lot of courage in, in one sentence. Uh, I've been encouraged to, to see the ways in which our students and our faculty and our parents and our staff have all risen to that challenge. Uh, Dr. Vaden encouraged the teachers to seek mirth, um, and uh, I have seen that. We've sought mirth by uh, laughing, laughing just at how uh, simply how crazy things are, and sometimes that's all you can do in the face of circumstances that are outside your control is just chuckle at them. But I've also seen our teachers embrace the obstacles of this season with a spirit of joy, a spirit of what it, we'll do whatever it takes in order to continue to serve our students so that uh, this season doesn't um, adversely affect them. Um, Dr. Vaden encouraged us to seek faith and justice and finally, to steward that thing that we have here at Providence, this vision and mission um, to equip students for lives of wisdom, virtue, and eloquence to the glory of God. We hope and pray that that is what we've done. Uh, 
We know that this has been unusual and that uh, none of us could have planned for the way that this year has ended. Um, and yet each step of the way, we've sought to steward faithfully those resources that God has given us in our pursuit of this mission. And we're especially grateful that all of our work in that regard is not done uh, alone, that ultimately the success or failure of uh, stewarding this mission is not up to us and our performance, um, but rather it's uh, made sure by the faithfulness of God. Um, and so Dr. Vaden ended his talk uh, at the very beginning of this year uh, with these words that I want to end with um, as we close out the year. The words of David from the Psalms, one thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to see him in his temple. Our hope is that uh, throughout the course of this year, you've had the opportunity to do that, that being part of this Providence community has given you uh, small glimpses of the beauty of the Lord. Um, and our prayer is that even as we part ways for the summer, that we will uh, be reunited again uh, at, the, at the other end of our summer, and we'll be able to continue to attest to the Lord's faithfulness in each of our lives and our families. Well, with that, what I want to do is um, invite Mrs. Ryder up. She's already up at the piano. Uh, and we're going to sing together, no nobies. Uh, obviously, you're, uh, you're muted, but uh, we'll, we'll sing here, and you can feel free to sing along um, in, your, uh, in your respective homes. As we sing no nobies, we're going to sing it twice through, and then at the conclusion of that, uh, Mr. Buckles will, uh, will come up and pray for us to uh, close things out and we'll ring the bell. So we're going to sing No Nobis twice through. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate you joining us. I'm going to close us with a word of prayer, and then Mr. Keating will ring the bell for us. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it's amazing as we look back on this year and consider your faithfulness, Lord. Even though there are various trials that we have faced, so many things that we never could have expected or anticipated, we find great encouragement knowing that none of this has taken you by surprise. Lord, we're thankful that we have a school such as Providence where our aim and our priority is to draw nearer to yourself, to learn, yes, to grow, indeed, potentially even to go on and pursue a fine career and to do good things in this world. But ultimately, Lord, may it all bring you glory. May our learning each day bring you glory. May our summer break and all of our activities therein bring you glory. May the way we react to various crisis situations bring you glory. Lord, may each student who is part of Providence go on to glorify you with all of their lives. That is our prayer. That is our desire. And also, Lord, how we long to gather together again in person. We ask, Lord, that that would come about swiftly and soon, and that it would come about safely. We're grateful, Lord, for the way that you provide for us day by day. Help us learn how to depend on you more with each day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Mr. Keating will ring the bell. Thank you again for joining us, and you all have a wonderful summer. We look forward to seeing most of you next Thursday. 
Have a great day.